And if Justice Thomas really wants to deal with bullying in America or this problem of people supposedly unwilling to accept outcomes that they don't like, I've got some advice for Justice Thomas. Start in your own home. Have a conversation with Jeannie Thomas. She refused to accept the legitimacy of the 2020 presidential election. Why? Because she didn't like the outcome. And so instead, she tried to steal the election, overthrow the United States government, and install a tyrant. That's bullying. That's being unwilling to accept an outcome because you don't like the results. Because the former twice impeached so-called president of the United States of America lost legitimately to Joe Biden. How did she respond? Instead, she said the Bidens should face a military tribunal in Guantanamo Bay on trumped up charges of sedition. You've got to be kidding me. You got to be kidding me. New York representative uh, there, Hakeem Jeffries was going after Jenny Thomas and apparently also uh, (laughs) Clarence as well, her husband uh, on the Supreme Court over her constant involvement. More actually details coming out about the way that she tried to interfere with the 2020 election. Let's go to some of those details that got him so fired up. So the House Committee investigating the January 6, 21 attack on the Capitol has obtained email correspondence between Virginia Jenny Thomas, the wife of Justice Clarence Thomas, and lawyer John Eastman, which we heard about from yesterday during that hearing, who played a key role in efforts to pressure Vice President Mike Pence to block the certification of Joe Biden's victory. And that's according to three people involved in the committee's investigation. The emails do show that Thomas's effort to overturn the election were more extensive than previously known is what two of the people said. The three declined to provide details and spoke on the condition of anonymity, of course, to discuss sensitive matters, which kind of that, that didn't make much sense to me. Uh, they declined to provide details and spoke on the condition of anonymity so that they could provide details. Which one are they doing? Okay, fine. Just I get hung up on small things sometimes. Okay, so uh, um, outside of that, in the weeks after the 2020 election, Jenny Thomas repeatedly pressed Meadows to overturn the outcome. And that's according to text messages that are obtained by The Post and CBS News. After January 6th, she told Meadows in a text that she was disgusted with Pence who refused to help block the certification of Biden's electoral college victory. And she wrote, we're living through what feels like the end of America. (laughs) During that same post election period, Thomas also pressed Republican lawmakers in Arizona to help keep Trump in office by setting aside Biden's popular vote win and choose their own electors. The Post has also reported that. And that's based on documents that were obtained via a public records request. Uh, Thomas sent the emails via Free Roots, which is an online platform designed to facilitate sending pre-written messages to multiple elected officials. So I'll pause there for a second, um, Bridget, because we've got Jenny Thomas who's sending these emails, and it's it's actually it's 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 almost like um, what's my man's name, Peter Navarro, who's going on talking about the Green Bay sweep every time he gets on television. What we're trying to do was replace some electors in certain states, and then outside of that, we we're trying to overturn the election. I'm not sure what the problem was, but what we're finding out now is Jenny Thomas was one of those levers behind it. And some people may wonder, well, this is the wife of a Supreme Court justice. What kind of actual power does she have? Really fast, let's point that out because um, the House, uh, the House, let's jump down to graphic eight, you guys. House January 6th Committee Chair Benny Thompson on Thursday said that the panel investigating the US Capitol attack has sent a letter to her asking her to speak with them about her role in the effort to overturn that whole thing. Also, John Eastman was a clerk for Clarence Thomas and he was also working with the Trump campaign and advising him on all this whole thing. So there's lots of things crossing over and her power actually extends further than what people may wanna, I guess people defending her may wanna admit. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I am so glad that you brought up the question of how much power and how much influence that she actually had over this process. And this is actually kind of a tough story for me because, you know, when you think about how many people are losing faith in our institutions, really losing faith in our government, this is exactly the kind of thing that I think validates that that mindset because it's so difficult to believe that our institutions and our elected officials and the people that are supposed to be in charge of making sure that our country is being run in the way it's supposed to be run. When you see this kind of like obvious bold face corruption, when you see the wife of a sitting Supreme Court justice behaving in this way and being able to sort of do it seemingly while evading any kind of accountability or even conversation about it. I think people, it gives people 
it lends credibility to this idea that your institutions just cannot be trusted. And so I think absolutely the committee should be subpoenaing Jenny Thomas, not just inviting her to testify. Like mm-hmm. this is not a like a tea party where she can, you know, politely decline to testify. I think that we deserve answers. And I think for too long that the Thomas has been able to really avoid even the conversation about what is going on, her behavior and what kind of influence she actually held in this process. But I think it's just, we deserve to know that. The American people deserve to know that we deserve answers. Clarence always gets heat for the way he votes, the way he doesn't read much, the way he doesn't pay attention to what's going on. It's just, it's a, I why should I waste my time reading this stuff when I know which way I'm gonna vote? I'm gonna vote with the uh, with whatever conservative uh, direction I may choose to that jumps with the party lines, which actually is supposed to be separate from the Supreme Court. That's the point of the lifetime appointment, but with that's been completely flipped on its head. You mentioned how they need to actually speak, and actually Jenny Thomas is looking forward to it. Let's go to this. She says, I can't wait to clear up misconceptions when she's being asked to come in, is what she told the Daily Caller. I look forward to talking to them. The conservative news outlet said it pressed Thomas to detail those misconceptions that she's gonna clear up, but they did not immediately receive a response. It's maybe because there's not many misconceptions to clear up. Or you have to go into it bloviating and talk about how big of a person you are. And we'll see. Uh, she should be careful what she says because we've seen as these hearings are going uh, that they find a way to right after you say something, they release something that will um, dispel that. Let's oh my God. Way. Absolutely, it's, it's, I feel like whoever is putting together the, the um, hearings is like, they are the, the love, that's like real Bravo, real housewives style production <laughs> where it's like, you said this thing, here's a video of you doing the exact opposite, the opposite, curious, right? Like, so I, I would be, I also am looking forward to her testimony. And I think it's interesting that a conservative outlet, like, like the Daily Caller, she declined to give any kind of like, you know, concrete details about the misconceptions that she feels that people have about, you know, her role in all of this. And so I agree with Jenny, I'm looking forward to it as well. Hey, she could have gone on any network that would have invited her to clear up any misconceptions before now. So I get the feeling maybe she's being, she's trying to figure her approach now. I'll put it that way. I uh, looking completely agree. To it.